Hi class, now let us continue to second chapter, the overview on RTL design. For this chapter, you are supposed to understand the overall concept and diagram of an RTL system. It is just a drawing of box. It is just a drawing of two boxes in a big picture, a big picture of RTL system. There is virtually no two RL, no two RTL designs that are remotely similar to each other because RTL system is already at very high level design in digital electronics and there are many components inside so we can hardly find any two design that can be considered similar even two versions of systems that are doing the same thing might be so much different from each other. For this reason, it is hard to generalize RTL design in order to get a generic template. And also, because of the, the difficulty to create a generic template, most literature, most textbooks, most textbooks will go straight to problems in teaching RTL in in teaching RTL. However, we can start with an overview of an RTL by looking at a big picture drawing of them that consists of two components. The two components are control unit and data unit. These are the two components that we need to design and control, need to design and coordinate so that the system work as we expect. RTL system has, of course, the entirety of its system. We give it a big rectangle box like this. Inside it, we have a module for control unit that will be controlling the other part of the system, which is data unit. There will be lines communicating information between these two modules, communicating signals, communicating signals between these two units. The one that comes from control unit to data unit is what we call control lines. This control line could be the selector line for the, multi the multiplexer or the, the, or the selector lines for the multifunction registers and the one that comes from data unit to control unit are the status lines example of examples of these lines are the overflow status from adder or multiplier for example and also the comparison status from comparators. So the two units can connect to each other. We also need outside signal so that we can control and get the status of the operation of the RTI system. The first one is
the start signal coming from outside to coming from outside straight to control unit and the other one that is, that is coming from the RTL system going out is the stop system it also comes from control unit these are the two signal that the outside user will be using to control the entire RTL system The shape of the signal for start signal is a pulse signal like this. The start signal is like when we are pressing the start button in a microwave, for example. We start somewhere so that the system can tell when to start the operation and then it has to go back down just like we release the start button from just like when just like we release our finger from the button on from the start button on the microwave oven the signal shape for stop signal is a step up signal like this this is to indicate the operation is finished when stop signal is high and this signal has to go down again when another start signal come so that it can indicate that the process is so that so that it can indicate that another process is being executed and when the value is 1 again, it indicates that the process is finished. So, not only to control unit, to data, to data unit, there are also signals that need to come directly to it and coming out directly from it. These are the data unit that is coming in. It is a thick error because most likely there will be many many bits that will be coming in as data into data unit start and stop lines normally are one bit lines and the data out is also a thick line indicating that of course our calculation will result in so number of bits so this is the big picture of the RTL system and most of our job will be to design what is in the control unit as finite state machine FSM and what inside in data unit is the data pass system